Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today is going to be a bit of a chop shop. I'm going to be pruning back a lot of my trees that have grown tall over the summer. I'm going to start today with my pencil cactus. And I have to say, this is probably one of my least favorite bonsai, if you even call it a bonsai. I tried pruning one down and it didn't react to bonsai techniques at all. So the next time I pruned it a little lighter and it seemed to grow well, but it's still a big sprawling mess and I, it takes up so much room and it doesn't look very attractive at the moment. They can, I mean, they can grow into magnificent trees, but I don't like this one, but I'm going to prune it up today and we'll try and hopefully it'll change my mind. Maybe someday I'll really like this. Here's a close-up of one that I pruned down short. I pruned all the little, I don't know if you call them branches, but I pruned them all off short. And you can see they're still green. They didn't die. And this was several years ago. And only one shoot came out and then it just started sprawling again. So yeah, I don't think you can uh, prune these pencil cactuses compact and expect you know new shoots to grow out from these old branches. They just seem to sit there dormant. So the next time I pruned it, as I said, I, I kind of pruned it more moderately and it seemed to react okay to that. I have no idea what causes them to grow in certain areas. When I pruned these back, there was little nodes, little leaf nodes on them. And I tried to prune back just, you know, after those and nothing came out of them. So, so today I'm just going to prune it all back, trying to get it more of a tree-like form, I guess. You know, removing some of these lower branches, trying to get a canopy up top. I have seen, you know, beautiful examples of these, fairly large, as street trees in uh, some of the warmer countries, and that they look like a regular tree. And I've seen them in uh, some of the botanical gardens. Fantastic. When they get old, they get bark on the trunks, and they get a branch structure and a canopy. And All right, I'm going to start... You have to be really careful with these. The sap is poisonous. And if you get it in your eyes, it could cause blindness. So you've got to be really careful with the sap on these when you're pruning them. So I'm going to start by trying to prune a tree form. So I'm going to get rid of these lower branches. So here I go. There's one, two. And you can see it bleeding over here. It just, the sap oozes out. So I'm removing these lowest branches just to get the trunk kind of by itself. So it's not a big bush. I'm trying to get a tree-like form to this plant. And there's one really down low here. I'll get that. Like that. So that's got this tree into more of a upright trunk. I'll do the same for the one over here. Like that. And then I'm coming up into the canopy here and I'm going to reduce some of these long shoots back. Yeah, I've got some really sprawling branches. I'm going to remove this one completely. It's just really long. Like that. Giant branch. I'll prune this one off shorter. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how they react to pruning. I just haven't figured it out yet. I'll leave two sort of branches on here and remove the rest like that. Um, I'm going to remove the big central one off this branch like that. I'll reduce this one back to this node back here. leaking sap everywhere. 
just oozing out. I'll take this long one off here, like that. Take this long shoot off here. I'll take this branch off down here. There's a ridiculously long shoot here. Take that off shorter. I don't think I'll be able to get these really compact today, but you know, certainly better than it was. It's just a sprawling monstrosity. So an upright one here I can reduce back. This one going towards the inside here I can take off. I got double branches here. I'll take this one off actually. Um, I'll take this middle branch off here, like that. Keep the ones that surround it. Now this littlest one down here, yeah, I don't know where to prune it. We'll take the most sprawling parts off, so I'll take that off. Cut this back. Cut this one back. And I'll take the top off here. Actually, I'll take it right off there. That'll be our experimental one, reducing it even more and see what happens. Take this one off here. Take this middle one off here. That is certainly more compact. I have no idea how this is going to react. That might be it for today. There's a lot of congestion up here. I'm just wondering if I should clean that up a bit. I think I should. I'll reduce it back to here like that and then take the upright one off and this one. I got a double branch here. I can take this lower one off. Just wherever I've got three branches coming from one spot, I'm reducing it back to two. that one. I'll take, uh, no I won't. Better leave that. I don't want to take too much off because, you know, it'll just end up like this, a little green thing that doesn't grow. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's got it, you know, fairly compact. It'll have to do. We'll see how it reacts to this pruning. I put all the pencil cactus clippings in a plastic bag and I'll throw it out in the garbage. I don't want it, you know, composting. Wild animals might eat it and poison themselves. And I'll also wash my hands thoroughly with soap and water so I get all the sap removed. I prune back one of my probably least favorite plants. So let's get out the next tree. The next tree I'll be pruning is my monkey ear tree. And it's grown really tall. It needs cutting back. These trees were started from a seed just a year and a half ago in June of 2019. And they've grown fantastically, um, especially this middle one. It's just shot up like a rocket. Uh, it just shows the diversity in seeds that, you know, some seeds might give you strong growth. Some may be a little weaker. So today I'm going to be pruning it back. I have pruned these trees back once. So I did a, a prune here, a chop on the trunk here before. I did a chop here. I don't think I touched that one and it doesn't look like this one has been touched either. So yeah, I'll be uh, pruning them back today. A general rule in bonsai is that the thicker the trunk is, the taller the tree is. So in this little clump of trees, I'll follow that rule. My 
thickest tree is in the middle here and it'll be the tallest and the ones that surround it will get shorter as the diameter gets smaller. I've got to pick a point on the trunks where to prune them and you can see the leaf scars where the leaves were and that's where your new branches will grow out of. So you can kind of tell where the new growth will come from these scars on the trunk. And because they grow so rapidly, these trees, I probably want to prune them quite short and then have it develop tall again. Building up that trunk and the root system. So I think I'm going to prune it off right here. So here I go, just a flat cut. There I go. So that is how much I pruned off. About a meter. So that's going to be my tallest tree. That means I've got to prune all the other ones shorter. So the next thickest tree in diameter is this one here. And I'll prune it off right here. Like that. And then this one, it was previously pruned back to here and then it's grown. I'm going to take this one off right here. And then my one out the back here, that'll be my shortest tree and I'm going to prune it off right here. Like that. And that gets that forest pruned up, ready to grow once again. A lot of these lower leaves are kind of turning yellow and falling off as the vigor was going up the top of the tree. But now all the vigor will be back down here and it'll sprout new branches. I'll just clean up a dead part here that was from the last pruning. And I think that's it. That's uh, got these trees chopped down in size. There's a look at the forest. So hopefully next time we see this forest, it'll have all this new green foliage on it and it'll be growing all kinds of nice branches. So on to the next tree. The next tree I'll be pruning today is my silk floss tree that I got from Chris Hendry and it's grown really, really tall. This will be the second pruning of the silk floss tree. I pruned it the first time up here and here and it divided from the one trunk into two branches and the same with the little one here. This one is a cutting off this one. So I started off with just one tree and I tried two cuttings and this one didn't make it. So I'm going to pull that out. Here's a closer look at the thorns on here. They're not all that sharp, but they're uh, they're pretty cool feature. It really makes it look like a prehistoric tree or something. I've got a lot of little seedlings in here and these are from the privet hedge. They just grew in here all by themselves and I've left them. They're, uh, they can grow. I'll put them in their own pot someday. It's time for some action in the chop shop once again. So let's, uh, let's get cutting. I'm going to keep some branching on this small branch here. So I'll prune it off here like that. On the smaller tree, I've got some outward facing leaves here. So I'll prune it off here. And this one, I'm going to prune it off here. These trees were allowed to grow all summer, so they have all kinds of vigor in them. So when I cut them back like this, they've got all kinds of energy stored in the trunks and the roots that they'll grow the new branches in quite quickly. Now, the big chop is the big main leader up here, which is also getting thorns on it. And I think I've got to go quite short with it because you know it's thickening up so fast it almost blends in with the trunk. So I'm going to go quite short with it. There's a leaf node here. Uh, there's one back here, one here. I'm going to be daring. I'm going to go right back. Well, yeah. I think I am. I'm going to go right back to here. So here I go. Just like that. So that was a big, big chop. 
There's a look at the silk floss trees now, pruned up, more compact, and ready to grow again. Let's get out another tree. The next tree I'll be pruning today is my bullhorn acacia. It's already been pruned once also, and it was just started a year and a half ago. So you see how tall it is? These bullhorn acacias are native to Mexico, and I'm already getting some branching on it. I've got one branch here, a small one, one here and the main trunk. I've already pruned it off here once and that stimulated some lower branching to develop. So I'm going to be doing the same thing today, reducing it down. And it's called the bullhorn acacia because it gets these really cool thorns on it that look like the horns of a bull. Here's a look at the bullhorns up here. And the leaves are also really interesting. They're almost like fern leaves. They're kind of very feathery and yeah, really interesting looking. It's a really cool plant. I really like it. It's time to prune up the bullhorn acacia. Last time I trunk chopped it right here and then the new leader grew up and it's almost the same thickness as the original trunk. So it caught up very quickly. So I'm looking for a point to prune it. I've got a leaf scar here. There's one down lower here. There's one up here. There's one up here. I do have a nice branch here that could be the new leader. I think I'll, I think we'll go with that. I think this branch will be my leader right here. So I'm just going to give it a bit of room for dieback and I'll just prune it off right here. So here I go. There's the size of that leader I took off. All those nice thorns too. Okay. So next I'll prune this branch down and I have a nice branch coming out the side here or a leaf so I could prune it just above there like that. And that should do it. There's a look at the bullhorn acacia now. So I've got my leader here. I've got a new leader on my secondary branch here. I've got a branch forming out the bottom there. So hopefully it'll start to fill out a bit and my new leader will take off again and we'll get this trunk even thicker and more tree-like in the future. So on to the next tree now. The next tree for today is a Dracaena. And this was a house plant that was given to me. No one wanted it. And I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll take it. So I have repotted it. I put it into a uh, bonsai soil. I did some root pruning, but not a lot. Um, and it's quite large, so today I'm going to cut it down and start it off as a bonsai. I would prefer to prune this tree sort of mid-summer or early summer, but I just don't have a choice and it's too big to keep in here. It uh, just takes up too much room and blocks out too much light. So I'm going to prune it off today, prune it back shorter try and develop some new branches. It does have a nice root base, I'll show you that. There's a close-up of the root base, so it's got some nice spreading radial surface roots. Quite interesting. This tree does have some really interesting movement in it, which I really like, but you know, if I keep all this movement, I get, I get to a tall tree again. Not really a bonsai. And I just don't have room for a really large bonsai. So I'm looking at the curves here. It kind of curves out towards the front and then snakes up. So if I wanted to keep all the curves, I'd probably prune it off to about here. The other option is to go even lower and just not keep much of the curves, just kind of here. But I kind of think, you know, this is pretty interesting. So I think if I were to prune it off here, I'm just kind of missing a bit of curvature up here. Most of it's still on the tree. So I'm going to go fairly high. So I think I get all this movement here and then it kind of ends and has a gentle curve. So I'm going to allow a bit of room for dieback. So I'll prune right here. Just a flat cut. So here I go.
like that. And there goes the top of the tree. So they usually, you know, do back bud really well. It'll get new growth coming out. And hopefully someday it'll become a nice bonsai. I started a Dracaena bonsai quite a few years ago and a lot of people ask me what does it look like today. It's chilling down in the basement so I'll bring it up and we'll have a look at it. Here's a look at my Dracaena. As you can see it's grown quite well. The new branches are developing nicely. The trunk is thickening up and the root base is getting better also. When I first repotted the tree I found all the roots were growing pretty well straight down so I tried to make them arrange them as radially as possible and try and kind of spread them out in the soil a bit so you can see maybe in the back here they're kind of flaring out a bit so next time I repot it I'll try and further work the roots and get a nice kind of radial root base on them. I like the number of the roots I think that's really nice that there's so many I think once you know once it develops more it'll look quite good. I think originally the tree had four branches on it and one died off. So there's the scar where I pruned the dead branch off. So I still have three trunks on it. So it goes from one to three. And then I pruned it further up here. My first branch chop was here. And then I've grown from one into two here. Um, this one's divided from one into two here. The third branch. I pruned it off here and it got a new shoot coming up here, divided in, into two, and then only one survives. So it still goes from one to one here and it's kind of an inside branch. So it's possible in the future, you know, maybe I'll get something growing out this side to try and develop that crown. I think these Dracaenas have the potential to become really nice and a little bit unusual bonsai. This fall I was rebuilding the plant room putting a new roof on it and the trees underwent some uh, pretty stressful conditions. I had to keep them out in the greenhouse until December which is winter time and then I moved them into the cold basement and uh, it's pretty cool down there too. So I did have a few casualties from all this moving experience um, not having my plant room ready in time and one of them is my kapok trees. The kapox were doing well in the greenhouse outside and then I brought it into the basement and it seemed to be doing really well there. At that time the basement was a little warmer. It was around 7 or 8 degrees and then when it got cool outside the basement dropped to the 5 degrees one night and I think that did it in because after that night all the leaves were drooped which is never a good sign. There is still green on the trunks but from my past experience with kapok trees is that once the leaves go like that, the tree's dead. It means the root system has died. But there's still hope. I'm not going to stop watering them. Um, who knows? Maybe it could come back. Maybe this, the leaves were sensitive. But I don't know. From past experience, they may be doomed once again. For the second year in a row, I've killed my kapok trees. I'll remove the dead leaves on them today, put them back in the bench and see if they survive. So it just goes to show that they can withstand cool temperatures up to about plus five degrees Celsius. After that they're toast. I didn't think I froze them last year but I wasn't sure and now I know that you know they can die even though they don't freeze which is unusual most tropical trees will live quite fine uh, right down to the freezing point as long as they don't get frost but the kapoks are a little more sensitive I guess you know being a tropical rainforest tree Yeah, so I'll just keep watering it and see what happens. There is, you know, lots of green on it still. The last tree I'll be working on today is this corn plant. I'm not even sure what species it is. I'll look it up later, but um, it can't even stand up by itself. Uh, it used to, 
And then the cats tipped it over, and that's why we don't have any house plants, because the cats always seem to get into them and tip them over and stuff. So I think today I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to chop it off short so it can stand up by itself. And that'll be about it and just see if it recovers. It looks quite healthy up top. It wasn't looking the greatest earlier, but uh, you know, it's recovered in the plant room here. So it's looking pretty good. So I think it's strong enough to survive a bit of a trunk chop. All right, I'll put the tree up on the bench here and I have to hang on to it, otherwise it tips over. And I'm going to prune it quite short. It's a skinny trunk, so... I don't know, about here maybe? I think about here. Here I go. Just like that. So now it stands up by itself. I can maybe put a little more soil on the one side to make it a little more stable in the pot. It does have some nice roots down here, some fairly radial roots. So I don't know, there might be hope for it. I'm left with a bit of a stick in a pot here, but we'll see how it grows. I've had a lot of people ask me, when am I going to prune my jade trees? So that will be coming up on the next video. I thought I'd show you my small jade here that's in flower. Looks really nice still. And I noticed there's more flower buds coming out on this shoot. I don't know if there's any on this one. No, just on this one. They don't smell at all, but it sure look beautiful. It, it turns an ordinary jade into something very exotic looking and yeah. So that's it for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Multi Zone.